Okay, so this is going to be like a sort of intro or primer to Sky Strikers. I'm going to cover the lists, I'm going to cover like alternate card choices, I'm going to cover the side deck of course, and I'm going to cover some of the more important matchups. So one of my friends asked me for a list, and originally I was going to just like type that up and then throw some tips in, but I figured that this would be a bit more holistic, I guess. I do mainly play OCG format, so I'm not technically like super familiar with TCG, but I think I've seen enough of it that I can make like some decent judgments here, and I'll provide alternate card choices anyway in case I want to switch it up. So getting right into the main deck, we're starting with the deck list. We have three Ray, self-explanatory, best monster in the deck, best girl, uh, one Rose. A lot of people play two. I think that Rose is usually super bricky when you open it, opening hand, because if you open like a Rose and a Ray, or like a Rose and a Rota, then it just sort of sucks. I mean, I guess a Rose and Rota isn't so bad, since you can use the Rota as like Ash Bait, but still. You could feasibly run two, especially if you're running Desires, but... I think the card just really isn't necessary. Honestly, it's just like a good one of to have in case they want to search it with Rota. Uh, three Nibiru. Uh, there's still enough combo decks, so this is a good card. Good enough to be included in the main. Like, decks are still summoning a lot. Now, decks can play around this, either by just choosing to forgo a few summons and then on a slightly weaker board, or try to get it in a gate beforehand. So. One of the things about this list is that we are tuning the hand traps, so that mathematically we're usually going to open two, because we're playing 14 total, I believe. Are we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, yeah, I had a fucking head-ass moment there, but yeah, we're playing 14 hand traps. And if you open, like, Nibiru and Valor, or Nibiru and Midland Chill, then that can beat out a lot of decks, because, like, they'll have their Negate and then you Nibiru, and then they try to negate it, and then you can, like, Veiler or Minlet. So we definitely want to be opening, like, a combination of these. But anyways, yeah, 3 Nibiru, dead in some matchups, just sighted out in those matchups, doesn't really matter. Uh, Triple Ash. Self-explanatory. I will say that, like, how you use Ash is a big indication of, like, your knowledge as a player. Definitely, like, uh, I'll go over that a bit more in matchups. Triple Valor, also self-explanatory. Uh, it is not once per turn, which is actually really good because this is the only match. This is the only hand trap that you can like see in multiples, and it won't totally suck. Another thing is that it's necessary for a play that we can do on our extra deck with Celine, and we'll get more into that later. Uh, double Ghost Mourner. This is a bit of a flex slot. I think that Ghost Mourner is one of the candidates for like a decent fourth hand trap option. But obviously it's not the best, because it has to target a special summon monster. So like against an Alistair, for example, this doesn't do jack shit. And this also wants per turn. You could play a few other things in this slot. I'll get into that in some alternative cards that I'll show later. Or alternative options. Uh, area 0, we run 2. 3, it's like Duncan says, you want to see it some of the time, but not all the time. Or rather, I should say you want to see one copy of it, but you don't want to see two. Uh, three, you just you just brick on it too much. It's also like a really bad top deck a lot of the time, sometimes two. So yeah, I run two of that. And obviously you don't want to run one because desires. Uh, one, multi-roll, because it's limited. And if you want to know what any of these cards do, like... There you go. So what multi-roll does basically is, one, it can send like area zero or any other dead card you have, and then like your opponent can't negate your spells which can be really useful for board breaking. You have a sense area zero, and then area zero will then special summon a ray, which is also pretty nice, or a rose if you're so inclined. And then also, while it's on the field, whenever you activate a Sky Striker spell uh, with different names, at the end phase you get to set spells from your graveyard equal to the number of spy sc Sky Striker bleh, Sky Striker spells that you, set, that you activated while it was on the field and then they're banished when they leave the field. Uh, this is pretty good because it lets you break your opponent's board, and then you can set those same cards, and then you'll be able to disrupt their turn and sort of like deal with the dregs or whatever they have left in their hands. Three Widow Anchor, it is now not semi-limited, which is really nice. Uh, 
yeah pretty basic just like negate your opponent's monster effect and it's also on a quick play so you can chain it to things uh, two shark cannon vanish from the opponent's graveyard and then if there's three or more spells you can special summon and then widow anchor has a similar effect if there's three or more spells you can just steal the monster uh you can bump this to three because salamangrate isn't that great right now <laughs> because salamangrate isn't that great right now and also orcus isn't really in the meta anymore i feel like the banish isn't as relevant so i don't know if you need three but if you find that you want to see it more then you could run three and it wouldn't be bad uh afterburners this is your like premier board breaking card pop a monster throw more spells in the graveyard prop a spell uh, you want to run this at two because you're running desires again and you always want to have at least one copy in your deck because again it's like how you break boards uh, one jamming waves. This is another flex slot. Like you can take this out for something else. It's really not that great. I like to have it just because it's good in certain matchups, and we're also not running other spell destruction in the main. Uh, one hornet drones limited. Summons a token. Make your Hayate. You know, bibbity bobbity. We all know what that does. Pot of desires. Spanish ten. Face down. Draw two. Uh, there are a few alternatives to this card, but I still feel like Pot is the best option, and I'll explain that later when we're talking about other card choices. Uh, three Forbidden Droplet, or you could also, you could drop this to two, honestly, two or three. I really like having this card in the main, just because it's sort of like having three more Widow Anchor in a way. And there are a lot of matchups for being able to chain during the standby phase with this card to like negate a monster effect is going to be really huge. Somebody's fucking rumbling around up there. Okay, whatever. So anyways, we're playing through Droplet. Uh, another thing, though, about this card is that in the TCG it is $90. So again, we're going to be looking at like alternative card options later. And you can definitely cut this for something else if you don't want to... If you don't feel like shelling out like near 300 for a playset. Uh, reinforcement of the army. Uh, search your ray. Search your rows. Yeah. Terraforming. Uh, get your field spell. So this is like the third copy of this, basically. But then it's also like a bit more flexible because you can also search Mystic Mine. And we're only running one Mystic Mine. The reason that we're running it is just so that we have like that alternative target for terraforming in case we already opens this or like it's just not useful or we just need mine. And mine is like sort of the evil card, so if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare an attack. And then, you know, the reverse is true, if you control more monsters then you can't do that. And then once per turn during the end phase, if both players control the same number of monsters, destroy this card. Blah. If both players control the same number of monsters, destroy this card. So... This card isn't as good as it was, because... I think the top deck, which I forget his name off the top of my head, but we'll get into it later, uh, it sort of has like inbuilt outs to it, so it's a bit easier to out now. But if you like play this at the right time, then it can still just chase decks, and it can buy you a lot of turns to like sort of gather your resources. Uh, one up, Star Goblin. Yeah, this card is pretty. 30, 39 card deck, basically. Uh, and then three infinite impermanence, our last hand trap. Uh, is this a once per turn? No, this is not. So this is basically another Veiler. Except it is a trap, which means that in a lot of cases it's also, like, harder to negate. And you can also set it. It's just a really flexible card. Another important distinction between this and Veiler is that Veiler is during your opponent's main phase, but this doesn't have, like, a phase restriction. So this is almost really just, like, another copy of Widow Anchor but only during the standby phase. If you like move to your standby and your opponent uses a monster effect, you can just chain this and then you can proceed. Uh, side deck, two more jamming waves, uh, just for those. I mean, this is actually sort of cuttable, honestly, but if you're so inclined, you can run two more jamming waves to deal with control matchups. The thing is that, because we're not playing Cosmics in the main, I feel like Cosmics are better than Jamming Waves on the side, and we'll get into that later. Uh, two more Mystic Mines. You can probably cut these as well. 
and then set rotation and metaverse to find your mystic mines. So I think that mystic mines are still good in a lot of matchups, so you probably still want to run that package. But if you find that it's not really working in your locals or like it's getting answered too easily, you can just cut like these four cards as well. And that gives you like a lot of sideboard space to work with. But the cards that I think are sort of necessary is three Solemn Judgment and three there can be only one. And so the reason that we run these in the side is that we are a blind going second deck. Uh, I sh probably shouldn't have mentioned that before, but <laughs> Strikers right now is a blinds going second deck. You always want to go seconds. So like game two, either maybe your opponent is playing a going second deck too, like Dinos or something, or maybe they just want to make you go first. That's when you want to side these in so that when you have to go first, like these are just sort of the best generic traps that you can run. So I definitely run these at least. Uh, extra deck, three Kagari, self-explanatory. Grab the spell from your grave. Uh, three Shizuka, yeah, this is what you end your turn on. Uh, grab something for next turn. Three Hayate. Now, this card is really important in the going second build because sort of the obvious combo is like... Ray, go into Hayate, swing, dump a card, usually like an Afterburner as a Widow Anchor. Or whatever it is you need to board break. Usually you'll be sending this, honestly, because like... You only have one copy, so you don't open it a lot of the time. And then after that, in main phase two, you go into your Kakari, and then you grab back whatever you dumped with Hayate. Uh, one Kaina, one Zeke, just the two one of sitting here. Uh, Zeke can come up sometimes. Kaina comes up really rarely. The important things with them, though, is their attribute, and that's going to come up because of access code talker. Now what this boy says is, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's effect activations. If this card is Link Summoned, you can target one Link Monster that was used, blah blah blah, so it, it gets a lot of attack. Uh, you can banish one Link Monster from your photo graveyard, destroy one card your opponent controls. Also for the rest of this turn, you cannot banish monsters with that same attribute. So this is why the attribute is important, because you're going like, Kagari, Shizuku, Hayate, and then you can just go into these two, and then you'll have like all five attributes in the graveyard, six because you'll also be going into her. And so you'll be able to like pop six of your opponent's cards, and they will not be able to respond to the activation of that effect. And so this is sort of like the card that Sky Striker was lacking, it's sort of like the finisher card. Once you've gotten them down in resources enough that they can't really like disrupt you, you just go into this and then you pop everything else and you just swing for like absurd amounts of damage. And the way that we're going into this is with Selene, Kriston, Halki, Fibrax, and then he took and also come up in some matchups. So I think we all know this card pretty infamous. Two monsters including a tuner. And when it's Link Summoned you can summon one level 3 or lower tuner from your hand or deck in defense position. And so this is why the 3 effect failure comes up because you want to summon one of the effects failures. So then what you'll have on your field, your, bleh, what you'll have on your field, you'll have this guy, which is a link two, and then you're going to summon this, which is a spellcaster. And then we have Selene, which is two plus monsters, including a spellcaster monster, link three. So link this and this into Selene. And then if this card is link summon, spell counters, who cares? Uh, during the main phase, you can ref you can remove three spell counters from your field. Special summon one spell caster monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position. And so, obviously, you're playing Sky Strikers, so there's going to be a shit ton of spell cards in your graveyard. So you're going to have like, at the very least, I think we can assume at the very least, you're probably going to have three spell counters. And then what you're going to do is you're going to remove those, and you're going to summon this girl back. And so then you're going to have three, like three, and then you're going to have this. And then two plus effect monsters, and then you can go into access code talker. So essentially what this does is it means that any any of your Sky Striker monsters plus any tuner, and Ash Blossom is a tuner, Effects Veiler is a tuner, uh, Ghost Mourner is a tuner. So any of your hail traps, hand traps other than the Nibiru, pl uh, plus any other monster, 
equals this card. And so it's really easy to go and say really strong, and this is your finisher. So anyways, let's move to our other options. So if you don't want to shell out for like, if you don't want to shell out the like $300 for Forbidden Droplet or whatever, or you know, like maybe, you know, I don't know how much Imperms are actually, maybe Imperms are cheaper now, maybe they've been reprinted. Like if you don't have like Imperms or something like that, well, you really should get Imperms. If you don't have Droplets, we'll just stick with that. Uh, you can run Psy Frame Gamma. We are blinds going second, so it is okay. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper. It's also really good because it, it pops the effects that it negates. So, you know, negate that activation if you do destroy that monster. And so this is important because unlike Valor, it's like when you negate, unlike Valor and Ash, when you negate the effects, because you pop the monster, that means I have one less body. And a lot of matchups and a lot of decks that run like extenders that can come up a lot because then they're not able to just like summon an extender and then continue the combo chain. Uh, Ghost Ogre. Uh, another alternative. So this card is really good against certain field spells. Uh, send it from your hand to your field to the graveyard. Destroy that card on the field. The thing is that its usage is really limited compared to a lot of the other hand traps because it's only really good against cards that have to remain on the field to activate its effects, which more or less boils down to field spells and then certain monsters. But a lot of matchups, like, you'll be playing against cards where it's like, okay, you pop it, but it still gets the effects. So it has, like, utility similar to Gamma because they have one less body. It's just not as good. Uh, triple Tactics, Talent. I think this card might also still be expensive. I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head. So, if your opponent has activated a monster effect during your main phase, so essentially if your opponent is used to hand trapped or if they've used like their VFD or something, activate one of these effects, uh, draw two cards, you're probably doing this one. Take control of a monster your opponent controls until the end phase, and decent. Lucky your opponent's hands, and eh, whatever, you know, who cares about these? You're using the draw two. Now my only problem with this as compared, so what this would replace essentially, or what this would complement, would be uh, your Pot of Desires. I mean, I guess you could cut something else from it for it, but I'm not sure if you would want to. The thing is that sometimes you want to use Desires as Ash Bait. If like you already have everything that you need in hands, and you just don't want like your Hayate or your Kagari to get Ash, so you might just need Ash Bait. And then that's when you would use Desires, and if they negate the Desires, just like, okay, well, I already have what I need in hands. But with this, it's like... You can't really use it to bait anything. You need to wait for them to use their effects, and then you can use this. And then you need to hope that like when you use it, you draw into something good. I don't know. I think that Desires is just better. I think that Desires just has like more utility in general. Uh, Eagle Booster. That target is unaffected by card effects this turn. So like, I don't know. If your opponent like, uh, Veilers or Impermanence is your Hayate or Kagari, I guess you can play this. It, it comes up sometimes, but I don't think it comes up enough to run in the main. And the thing is that because we're playing a going second variant, and it's like we're looking to break boards, especially because we don't have... God, the card has been banned for so long, I forgot what it's called. Especially because we don't have Engage. You're never going to want to search this, pretty much, because you'll always have like something more important to search. And so it's only going to be when you open it, but you're running it as a one-of, so you're barely ever going to open it. So like, what's even the point of playing it, really? Uh, DD Crow. This is pretty good, because it just banishes like any target from the graveyard, spell trap, whatever. Uh, again, because Salamon Great and Orcus both aren't that good right now, I feel like this card isn't as irrelevant as it was before, but it's still a really good option in the side. Uh, I don't think I'd run it main though. Cosmic Cyclone, pin 1000 life points and target one spell trap on the field, banish it. So this I think you definitely want somewhere in the side or main. The reason being that it is a quick play. And so I'll actually go a bit more into that later, but there's going to be some matchups. Well there's one specific card 
where your where is it there is going to be like some situations where jamming waves just won't be fast enough and you're going to want to have a quick play like card that can deal with spells or traps instead or floodgates floodgates specifically so now we're going to get into matchups so obviously we have uh, this boy true king of all calamities vft whatever you want to call him uh once per turn a quick effect so you can detach one material from this card and declare one attribute this turn all face up monsters on the field become that attribute also all monsters in your opponent's possession with that attribute cannot activate their effects or attack so this deck virtual worlds what virtual world does is it can go into this dude which is like a macrocosmos whenever a card is sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead which is obviously really fucking annoying because that prevents us from like getting our three spells in the grave but what this deck does virtual world is it can go into this and it can go into vft and so it's going to go into vft and then it's going to do its thing and then it's going to fucking prevent us from using Hayate, prevent us from using Kagari. Unless we have a Widow Anchor or... Well, any of our nine cards are really nine, assuming that you're running the fucking $90 one. So, like, the outs to this that we have, uh, Widow Anchor outs it, Mingus Chain Widow Anchor. Infinite Impermanence outs it, Mingus Chain Impermanence. Uh, drop it, Droplet outs it, Mingus Chain Droplet. Although I guess something that they could do is they could wait for you to summon and then use its effect so they can impermanence it, but then you still have Droplet and Anchor. But if you don't open these, then it sort of sucks, because then you don't get your search off, which means that you need to really hope that you open multi World or something like that. Uh, overall though, because we do have those answers in deck, I feel like Virtual World isn't that scary. The scariest thing is if they get this out and they get this out, because then you're not going to- because this also turns off Hayate. And then you're also going to have like multiple targets that you need to deal with. So virtual world, the two cards that you want to watch out for, this boy, this boy. Uh, and then of course we have Invoked Dragma. So Invoked is really confusing to play against because they have like a million cards that search. And so you have to decide like which card do I Ash Blossom. Now normally what I would say is you don't want to Ash Blossom Meltdown because if they have, or you don't want to Ash Blossom Terraforming actually, because if you Blossom Terraforming and they have Meltdown, then you look like a clown. If you Blossom Terraforming and they have Alistair, then you also look like a clown. If you Blossom Meltdown and they have Alistair, then you look like a clown. But if you Blossom Alistair and they have Meltdown, then you don't look like a clown because Alistair only gets his effect on normal summon, and they have no way to normal summon an extra Alistair. So even if they go like a meltdown at Alistair, and then they have two Alistairs in hand, like the second Alistair, I mean, yeah, it's nice that it's there because they get the attack effects, although it doesn't really come up, honestly. And they do have a follow-up play on the next turn, but the thing is that you're going to prevent them from getting their invocation on that turn. So what I would say is Ash Blossom, always save it for Alistair. Uh, of course, if you Ash Blossom Alistair and they have Invocation, then you look like a clown, but at that point, there's really nothing that you can do. And then in terms of the Dragmas, they don't actually do that much in terms of quick effects, but what this one can do is it can search out uh, Punishment. And what Punishment is going to do is it is going to send from the extra deck, and they have monsters that Actually, I'll try to search it up in a second. But anyways, until the end of your next turn after this card resolves, blah, 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 special summon. And then it's going to pop that monster. So, like, what they're going to do is you're going to send... Alter Entity and Tess. And so what this does is if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. So essentially what's going to happen is like they play this card and then with this card's effect they search this and then they set this and then when you go into like your striker monster or whatever they activate this they send this and then this card pops your striker and then this pops another card of the field if you happen to have like
where is it? If you like have your multi roll in the field, for example, and they activate this, then essentially they're going to get to pop your monster and they're going to pop your multi roll, which sucks pretty big time. So you could also actually, you know, to be completely honest, I would definitely save my Ash Blossom for this. Because the thing is that, like, if they get Alistair and then they get Invocation, then what they're going to do is they're going to go into Invoked. They're going to go into Makaba, which is an Agate and it's once per turn. And so the thing is that you can literally just bait out Makaba with, like, any card that destroys or negates because they'll be forced to respond to it. Or they lose the Makaba. Or they can just, like, decide to take the L and lose the Makaba and then not touch a card from their hands. Like, if you Afterburners it, if you Widow Anchor it, or whatever, it forces its activation and then you've effectively dealt with it. So I feel like that's easier to deal with than this setting this, because you don't actually have any negation in the main deck for this. So yeah, in the, in the Invoked matchup, maybe save your Ash Blossom for this card to prevent this being searched. And then if they open it, and then they open it, and that sucks, but it's like, whatever. Okay, anyways, that, that's 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 that much I've dealt with. Uh, these two are the best dash targets. This is probably the best dash target overall. And then in terms of beating them, you definitely want... The, the card that you really want to watch out for is... Uh, I don't actually know off the top of my head. There's one card they have that OTKs, I think is this one. Yeah, okay, so another thing is that definitely, like, don't fucking summon your rain put in defense position against this card. Just let them hit you once with it, because this boy will fucking obliterate you. Uh, I don't think it really matters in Striker. I think the reason why I thought of it is because I also play Necroz, and I've lost to this card so many times. Just like going through my incantations and then just eating me. Uh, the difficult thing about this deck is that it's very hard to run it out of resources because of Alistair. So what this boy does is if it's in your graveyard, you can target one of your banished Alistair, shovel this card into the deck, and if you do have that monster in your hands. So yeah, it's just going to keep summoning monsters. Uh, you just need to sort of try to uh, grind it as best you can. In any case, other decks. So we also have uh, Infernoble Knights. And what Infernoble Knights are going to do is they're going to make a big negate board. I don't know how good the deck is anymore, though, because Smoke Grenade did get banned, which is like their hand rip card. But yeah, Infernoble Knights just like break the board. Okay, bibbidi bobbidi, we're done. Uh, Eld's Lich. Now, this is another sort of painful deck to play against. This is one where you definitely want to be, like, using your shark cannons on this dude just to prevent them from, like, constantly getting him back on the field and constantly having, like, that pressure from the 2500 body. So, yeah, shark cannon him. And then the reason why we want to run the Cosmic Cyclones is because of Imperial Order. I mean, like, they won't always open it, but if they get Imperial Order and they flip this and you don't have... A quick pay, a quick play spell that destroys this in hands, and then you just lose the game. Like it's over. So yeah, cosmic cyclone for this, or how like even MST works if you fancy that. MST or cyclone, just like a quick play card that destroys spells and traps. And then a uh, salamangrate, salamangrate isn't that strong but it does still see a lot of play for some reason, probably because the deck is super budget. Like, most of it comes in the structure decks, so it's really easy to build. And Salamangrate is another deck like Eldlich and Evoke, sort of, where they're going to keep bouncing their resources, and they're just going to have a constant uh, flow. One thing that Salamangrate can do, especially to play against Nibiru, is they can just do with, like a really basic combo, where instead of going for the full build, full uh, full board they're going to finish on him they're going to bounce this back to their hands so they have a plan for next turn 
and they're probably going to have this set, so they're going to end on like a one negate, but they're also going to have the cards to do the exact same combo the next turn too, so just going to be able to keep doing that now. Salamangrate is very susceptible to graveyard disruption. Uh, gazelle is limited, so if you can banish the gazelle with the shark cannon, the sort of fucked. So I guess like keep an eye on that. If there's a lot of salamangrate at your locals, then that, that's the point where I would consider actually just signing DD crew. If you see like a lot of this boy, if you see a lot of this boy, that's when DD crew is good. Uh, we have dinos. Dinos is another VFD deck. Everything that I said about uh, this applies to dinos. The thing with dinos is that they can't actually, they don't have a card like this. So the only thing that you really have to worry about is VFD. Although, obviously, if they go second, they can like do a lot of damage to you with Tyranno. But uh, overall, I think the matchup isn't that bad. Like, Miscellaneousaurus uh protects from activated effects but if you're going second and like trying to break the board anyway then this doesn't really do anything what well, is during the main phase though yeah i don't know just like use your negation during the standby or something so yeah that's dinos uh and then finally we have zodiac which is up and coming again and what this deck does is it goes into Zeus. And what Zeus does is quick effects. You can detach two other cards from the field to the graveyard. You can attach two materials from this card, send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. Uh, yeah, board wipe, pretty annoying. So definitely, like, trade. this is just another matchup where if you don't naturally open a way to deal with this card, then you just sort of lose. Especially if they make, like, a Zeus and then they have it packed up with, like, some sort of protection. It's really annoying. And so, uh, yeah, that's essentially what this comes down to. And I am now going to delete all of this and not upload this video. And probably just type this out as a text document. Goodbye.